Hey, I'm Bruce Dixon, and I'm a candidate for steering committee of the Green Party in the elections now in progress. I've been a member of this party for eight years now, during which I have studied long and hard and written extensively, several articles at least, summing up the challenges faced by our party and how we might meet them. What I see when I look at the Green Party now is a, is a supposed national political party that is weak, disorganized at every level, as Howie Hawkins likes to say, and unable to compete with Republicans and Democrats at any level. At most, Greens hold no more than a handful of partisan elected offices nationwide, and Greens cannot afford a national office, let alone offices in any state that I know of. The Greens don't do regular mailings. We don't have an organizing bureau. We don't have an organizing manual or an organizing institute. We don't even publish anything that gives people tips and tricks and do's and don'ts who might want to organize a green local in their cities and states. Even worse, many Greens, including some in leadership, believe that this futility is a kind of success, that being so broke that we're dependent on handfuls of super activists in every town to dig into their pockets with no notice to cover expenses or print leaflets is proof of our party's purity. Some of these are the same folks who insist that the steering committee exists purely and only as an administrative body, though they never manage to explain how it takes nine people to administer a budget so small that we can't afford a staff or an office or regular mailings. I think I know we can do better than this. Polls show that tens of millions of Americans are eager for a party that stands for people, for the planet, for peace, as our party does. The fault is not theirs. The fault is ours. We are not well organized enough to deal with them. We haven't presented them with a party that makes sense. The reason that our party does not have hundreds or even thousands of active members in large cities is our exclusive dependence on handfuls of super activists, the people that I'll call super greens. Now y'all know who super greens are. Super greens are the people um, whose livelihoods and family situations allow them to give sometimes double-digit hours in a single week t to the party's work. These are the people who can afford to dig into their pockets on short notice and come up with two, three, four, five hundred dollars to print leaflets and cover other expenses. I love and respect these people. I've been one myself a few times. But this party has gone as far as it can go on the backs of people like that. We've got to become a mass party. Instead, we've become something like Occupy used to be, where if you couldn't stay for all the 12-hour meetings, you were not a shot caller. You were not a bottom liner. Your voice was simply not going to be heard. You were going to be on the outside doing finger waves. That's about it. To grow into a mass party, we have to learn the lesson that every other left and opposition party in the world has already learned that we have to depend upon dues from our members. If you imagine that members won't pay dues because the party isn't worth it, then you don't belong here. It's, it's that simple. If we give people something that's worth it, they'll pay for it. People put more than 10 or 12 bucks a week in the collection plate at church because they believe in the mission. If you don't believe you can sell the mission of the Green Party, then don't pay, don't be a member. But if you do, and thousands will, if asked, if given the opportunity, and if shown that we're serious about fighting for a living wage, fighting for rent control, fighting for union rights, fighting for the rights of everybody regardless of gender or orientation or the rest, then people will pay for that. People will fund and finance that. They do it all over the world. 
That's how the Labour Party, the biggest opposition party in the world right now, I'm talking about the British Labour Party, that's how they fund themselves, is with membership dues. There really is no other dependable way. Let's say you've got 100 people in your party paying $10 a month. That's $1,000 a month, or $1,200 a month, um, if your dues are $12 a month. That's enough to rent um, that's enough to rent meeting space in one of these vacant strip malls that you can find in every town. With meeting space, you can have events almost every week. The next time Cornell West blows through town or somebody that people want to hear, you can host them. You can draw a crowd that's bigger than just your super greens. You can draw 40, 50, 60 people in the room and have them deliver their message and your local party deliver its. That's how you recruit members. That's how you begin to be available to take part in fights for living wages, fights for rent control and all the rest. That's how you can avoid being the folks who just show up at election time, which is a criticism we frequently hear uh, about the Green Party. Frankly, it's justified. Uh, oh, and why are we able to show up um, election times? Because election campaigns raise and spend money. <laughs> and the party doesn't. So think about that a minute. To grow into a mass party, we've got, we've got to have dues. Dues are going to have to be, um, this is something that's going to have to happen from the bottom up, not from the top down. We can't do a dues-based regime on a national level until after we have four or five, six or seven states um, with successful examples of how to do this and how not to do it. Some have said that dues are exclusionary. Some have said that poor people won't pay this, but that's speaking from a place of privilege, a place that says that, well, I'm not poor, but I know what poor people want. And I know what they can afford, and they can't afford this stuff we're talking about here. That's your privilege talking. That's not poor people talking, that's you talking. Um, again, people put that stuff in the collection plate because they believe in the mission of the church. And if you can't sell the mission of the Green Party, then bless you, maybe you belong somewhere else uh, doing what you really do believe in. Good for you. Um, Poor people will willingly give to a political party if, um, you know, if we have and use meeting space for regular activities, if we are visible in local fights for things that matter to them. Now you wonder why, oh, also, there are also dues give everybody an equal stake. In the everybody give what they can mode, um, a few people give a lot. And then those people are esteemed as leaders. That's how your leadership of your Green parties becomes mostly middle class and above, mostly white, because they're the most likely people to be able to afford to just give and give and give. And so they become your leaders, and they become your only stakeholders. Everybody else hangs back. That's just the way it is. We need everybody to have an equal stake. Dues allow the person who has child care responsibilities, elder care responsibilities, two jobs, can't get enough hours, a person who can only show up for one monthly meeting and maybe one or two meetups during the month to pass out flyers, to gather new names for our uh, mailing list or other activities. That person needs a stake and that stake has to be equal to the stake of the super greens. Dues are the only way to do that. Now, dues cannot be done nationally, again, until we have several states um, that have experimented and found the correct formula for how to do this, how much to do it, and other details like that. Steering committee has no authority over what states do, except political and moral authority. As a member of the Green Party Steering Committee, um, I promise to use our political and moral authority to encourage states to make these experiments and to coordinate 
the comparison and study of various states, um, of the experiences of various states in how to grow this thing. Because if we don't um, look for best practices, we won't find them. That's just it. So um, if you want to see the party stay the way it is, there's other people to vote for. There's other people who rank number one. Um, none of them have any way or are offering any way out of where this party is. Um, I'm running as a candidate for uh, Green Party Steering Committee because I believe that many of us do know the way out of this. And, um, you know, make me your first choice. And I promise to devote my considerable energies and the energies of many, many others to getting out of this hole and to making us a party that competes with Republicans and Democrats, a mass party with a membership in the thousands and tens of thousands. We can do this. We know how we need your support in this election to begin to make it happen. Thank you. I'm Bruce Dixon.